begin. Assault Synchron is how I've been thinking I potentially wanted to pick back up Centurion and play it. We have the Primaria being a Primera that is equipped into the back row, special summoning activated to search our deck, so we have not used up our normal summon yet. Judea is going to be equipping the Emmeth to then summon itself onto the field to now Shokan into an Auxilla. Auxilla, oh boy, we're getting set up for a big evenly match. That's what I'm thinking. We had the Field Spell plus the Phalanx, so what did we accomplish here? We're going to be able to make a level 12 Synchro during the opponent's turn. A way to negate that evenly match. Now, we have to do it within the main phase. We have a Phalanx, which could target a monster card and banish it. So we have about double disruption. A negate and a banish. Uh, whoops. Damn, that just happened, and uh, it's too late. Yep, wow. Phalanx is not going to help. It's going to banish our Auxilla to come back during the next turn. It will trigger, because it will be a special summon as it's banished, then special summons. Yeah, we had to do that within the main phase. Now, that's the thing a, a lot of people are not thinking about, is e if you don't have evenly match, you could always pretend that you have one. So it looks like Centurion is one of those decks where you should potentially pretend to have an evenly match. I think a lot of players would be firing off all their effects within the main phase, fearing that evenly match, yet Rastasan did not, and they actually had it. We are going to be discarding with the Earthbound to search our deck. Soul Resonator searching our deck for a Vision Resonator. The Bone Archfiend is going to be discarding itself to summon a Vision Resonator from our hand. Or is that what it did? It's special summoned? I don't even know. We're going to decrease the level to further Shokan into a Red Rising Dragon to Reborn from the Graveyard. Come forth our Crimson Resonator, which will summon two Resonators from the deck. Further Shokaning into a Scar Red Dragon Archfiend. Further show calling into a hot red dragon arch in the abyss. This is all in main phase two. This is a negate on the field. We have Synchron Resonator, which is going to be adding back to the hand our Vision Resonator. And the Scar Red Dragon Archfiend is going to be summoning a Red Dragon Archfiend from the extra. Sure. Special summoning the Vision Resonator, making our Dispater. Dispater will be able to negate a monster effect. Further show calling with a hot red dragon archfiend into what? Centurion Auxilia? Wait, it's Centurion Resonator versus Centurion? Huh? What the? Okay, we have Trudea into the back row, banishing the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend to add the Uva Loop back to our hand. Dispater reborning the banished Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. Oh my gosh, this looks just probably the better way to play Centurion, huh? Or the sackier way. We have Phalanx for a disruption, Hot Red Dragon Archfiend for a disruption. We have the Dispater for a disruption. We're going to be able to level 12 Synchro during the opponent's turn for another disruption. We're going to be able to Phalanx banish a card. We have the Red Zone, which will be able to pop a card. And we have the Fiendish Golem, which is another banish. So about seven disruption versus what was just two disruption. Let's go. Reborn back our Auxilla which is going to be triggering our bonds, chain link blocking from a negate. Now the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend could still negate it, but the Dispater could not. Equipping the Emeth into the back row, grabbing a Trudea. Trudea is a full one card starter. We're gonna be popping off with our Trudea, triggering our field spell to Synchro Shokan into our Crimson Dragon, which will likely be going into a Blazar, yes? No, we're targeting a level nine. What level nine synchro are we summoning with the Crimson Dragon? Better than a level 12 Blazar? Trushilla. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why is there so much Trushilla today? What is going on? Trushilla on summon, banished from the hand, field, and grave. Goodbye to Auxilla on the field. Goodbye to Effect Veiler. I guess there was nothing to banish within the graveyard. Damn. Gargoyle send the Emmeth to come forth and summon from the hand. And we have Fiendish Golem targeting that monster, banishing it. Goodbye, and we are now scooping it up. Evenly match. Damn. Now, had we have fired off our cards early, we would have been able to at least blaze our negate the evenly match, but that field still will, still would have definitely happened. Wow. Let's hop in a game number two. <laughs> Again? Another evenly. So we're not going to imperm the Trudea. Come forth and special summon Primera. Primera is going to activate grab in the wake stand-up Centurion. We're holding imperm. Imperm for Auxilla. Discard Trudea, set up the Emmeth. Emmeth special summon from the back row. Further Shokan into our Auxilla. Auxilla activate to grab the Phalanx, which will be able to banish a monster. We're just going to hold on to Imperm. We don't care. And now if you preempt your Blazar, we're going to Imperm it first, and then evenly match your entire field. 
So notice how we're not doing this again. We cannot activate Primera unless the opponent says I end my main phase. You cannot enter the main phase of the opponent's main phase and then start activating your cards. They have to perform an action or tell you they're ending. So that's exactly what's happening. Hello, I'm going to battle phase again to evenly match you again, but we're not gonna fall for that again, so we're gonna Primera. Chain Max C. We're gonna Ash Blossom, negate that Max C, sure. Trudea is also going to be firing off. Special summon for the back row, making our level 12 Blazar to negate that evenly match. A problem with Centurion is also it has to play within the main phase, so it's so easily telegraphed what they're doing. It plays right into a triple tactics talent, unfortunately. Ameth is going to push the Trudea back into the back row. Good way to recycle Trudea, keeping her into the back row instead of going to the grave, making our Crimson Dragon. Now, we have an opportunity to just let the evenly match happen if they were to not have the Imperm and just have a Blazer on the field. We're going to Crimson Dragon, target the Auxilla. Imperm negating the Crimson Dragon. Phalanx is banishing the Crimson Dragon to come back next turn. Sure, okay, interesting. Now, it does not perform the Synchro Summon still. So we read this, you target the monster, return this to the action deck, and only if you do, well, it's no longer there to return back to the action deck, so we're not going to be synchroing into Blazar. And just like that, evenly match back to back. It's not even a 40 card deck, looking to be 50 cards. We keep on opening up evenly matched. We're going to start cooking in main phase two again. Foolish Burial, sending the loop from the deck to the grave. Resonator Call, grabbing the Vision Resonator. We're gonna, with the Bone Archfiend, discard. We're gonna be summoning the Bone Archfiend. Crimson Gaia is now in our hands. Send from the deck, decrease the level, make a Red Rising Dragon. Reborn from the grave, the Crimson Resonator, which will summon two Resonators from the deck. Further show conning into the Scar Red Dragon Archfiend, now making the Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Triggering the Scar Red Dragon Archfiend and the Synchron Resonator to add back to the hand as we then also show Khan from the action deck a Red Dragon Archfiend. Summon from the hand, making a Dispater. Further show Khan into an Auxilla. Damn, it's the same exact combo as the previous game. Write this down if you want to play this deck. Dispater reborn the Banished Hot Red Dragon Archfiend. This makes me want to play the deck, definitely. Setting up into the back row, Trudea, equipping the Primera. Primera summon, grab the Phalanx, which will be a Banish. Crimson Gaia, search our deck for the red zone, and let's freaking go. Auxilla is triggering. Woo, damn. Auxilla was an optional activation, which we then are now disrupting your Crimson Dragon, which was supposed to come back. Now it's not coming back because we're returning it back in the extra deck. I, we just had to do nothing. We had to not activate Auxilla, so that was for free. Now, we still have three cards banished, so they're gonna be able to negate another monster effect. We are going right into the Typhon Sky Crisis. So immediately, the Dispater is not activatable. The Hot Red Dragon Archfiend is not activatable. The Auxilla would not be activatable, but we have back row cards to deal with it. And by summoning this, we cannot summon for the rest of the turn. No more summons, as it just simply gets banished before it even activates. It's not a trigger effect. It's not a quick effect to spin a monster back to the hand. So back row being one of the big ways to deal with the Typhon. It has happened and just like that. Resonator Centurion taking a 2-0 victory. Thank you to both players for bringing Centurion to the tournament. I'm loving it. Let's keep on going. Let's go setting up the Nightmare Throne. We're not going to ash it as it grabs a D Lotus. If one of our cards will be destroyed, the Muckraker can tribute a Fiend Monster instead. We have the Soul of Rage, which could link off on a monster, make a little knight, and then banish another card in addition to that. We have Escape of the Unchained, pop a card in the field. We have Phantom of Ubel, negate a card, summon a Ubel into the field to then fuse with with the Eternal Nightmare, Eternal Favorite that is. We have Ash, we have Valor. We have about eight disruptions. Let's go. Earthbound Prisoner, Sweeper, searching for our Soul Resonator. What I think about Aturia Centurion, I have not seen anyone play that. I'd like to, though. Escape of the Unchained, activate, dropping us down to seven. Disruption, trigger the Yama to reborn from the grave. Now, Stand Up Centurion can be activated more than once in a turn. It's only the effect of Stand Up Centurion, which is a hard once return. And did we pop it on the activation of the effect? 
No, we, we popped it on the activation of the card. We should have waited for the effect. We are now going for a draw two, which tells your opponent, hey, I'm desperate. I don't even want to take control of one of your monsters. Taking control of the Soul of Rage would get rid of three disruptions, which we didn't even choose to do. We had the Crimson Resonator summon itself onto the field. Soul Resonator activating as the Soul of Rage is going to link off of the Crimson Resonator to now make a little knight to then banish the Soul Resonator off of the field as the Soul Resonator is attempting to add from the deck here. Come to us, Bone Archfiend. Now, Bone Archfiend is not going to be making any good plays if we don't have that Resonator on the field. We have Phantom of Ubel negating the Bone Archfiend, attempting to, so you could send another card from your hands to the field of the Graveyard, special summon this card. Okay, that is going to be negated. Ubel triggering to summon a Terran Carnate from the deck. And just like that, through eight Disruption Centurion Resonator, reasonably, understandably, was not able to break that field. Now, Centurion Resonator is going first. You could say you hate the event, but is there anyone in the chat who hates the Xyz Cup but has spent gems on the Xyz Cup? Because then I don't think Konami cares if you hate the event. Soul Resonator negates. Mate, I don't think so. Caught. <laughs> Crimson Gaia searching our deck for the Fiendish Golem. And just like that, what are our disruptions? The Phalanx is activatable even if we don't have a Centurion. Really target a face of monster, banish it. Yup, okay, so... We have Banish and Banish, double Banish. Let's go. Banish the D-Lotus before it activates, be gone. Now we have the Nightmare Throne, pop in a Spirit of Yubel to summon a Yubel onto the field. To battle we go. Okay, giving a Love Tap to the Soul Resonator as we then main phase two Phantom of Yubel. Now back to you, sure. Now, this is a double disruption. We're going to be able to essentially negate a monster effect, get a U-Bell into the field, and then fuse with the entire field. Plus max scene. The D-Lotus is another form of disruption. If you activate a monster effect, you can turn the effect into the opponent, destroys a U-Bell you control. Now, if you activate it while you have a Phantom of U-Bell, they destroy your Phantom of U-Bell. So you have to Phantom of U-Bell first, then D-Lotus, but if you D-Lotus afterward, you get rid of your U-Bell, thus your eternal favorite is not going to work. So there is a confliction with the D-Lotus and your other two disruptions, but it's still three. Let's see, let's see. And we don't have the Nightmare Paint. Ooh, uh, goodbye to Phantom of U-Bell. I guess the, the Night Nightmare Throne will at least trigger, though. S sure. So we lose Phantom of U-Bell. Nightmare Throne triggers. Are we getting a regular U-Bell in the field to make the eternal favorite be activatable? Chain max C to max C, sure. So that would force them, if they have a call by the grave, to then finger themselves. Add you bell, summon you bell. So we're ready with the eternal favorite to fuse with that entire field. But uh, the entire field of trash, so we're not going to even do that. We're going to use eternal favorite to be... <laughs> what? what? We, d we activated the effect of eternal favorite to... Uh, uh, okay, sure. We're going to Nightmare Throne, grab a Terror Incarnate. Let's get to it. Uh, it. We just flipped it up. That's all we did. We didn't actually use the Fuse. You have to discard the Fuse. We're going to summon our U-Bell from the Graveyard. Now, the other effect of the Eternal Favor is not going to be activatable, so we're not going to be able to Fuse the field. We do have a Monster Negate plus the Ash Blossom Mate. Ash Blossom. Negate the Crimson Gaia from searching your deck. I don't think so. Add a Red Archfiend card from your deck to your hand. We still have Phantom of Ubel with no Nightmare Pain. We're not forced to attack into them. Phantom of Ubel negates. Now, Eternal Favorite summoning Ubel, I don't think it was a good idea because Phantom of Ubel summons Ubel by popping Spirit of Ubel. Then you could use the Eternal Favorite to fuse with your Ubel, which we now can't do. Oh, we're flipping it down? What the heck? Crimson got up. Uh, sure. <laughs> What's going on here? We're just making funny plays. Sure. All right. Nightmare Pain off the top of the deck. Now, Eternal Favorite makes the Spirit of Ubel not activate, but you can make it miss the timing. How you would do so is you could activate Nightmare Pain, just the activation from the hand, then chain Eternal Favorite, reborn the Spirit of Ubel. The Eternal Favorite now misses the timing, which is a good thing. And then the Spirit of Ubel will trigger to search our deck for another card. If we had one that we want to search. Otherwise, it does not get to activate because you can't respond to its summon. We're going to be popping the Ubel, grabbing a D-Lotus, trigger Ubel, trigger the Nightmare Throne. This is usually a confliction. 
Okay, we're recycling the Phantom of Bell back in the extra deck as we did not have two monsters to summon to the field. Very good. D Lotus into a Spirit of Bell, which will be activating to grab from our deck a second copy of our Nightmare Pain. Return from the graveyard back to come forth into a Phantom of Bell. Now we are about to reflect 3,000, 6,000, 9,000, 12,000 damage we have here. So we're gonna activate Fiendish Golem. Target a monster on the field with 2,000 or more attack and banish it. We're gonna wanna banish our own card. <laughs> yup. Now we still have 18, 18, 18, 18, which is not enough for lethal damage. Almost. Dropping them down to 800 life. Evenly matched, banishing until both fields are even. Okay. Terra Incarnate wiping out all other monsters within the end phase. The Eternal Favorite's no good. The Terra Incarnate is also uh, not so good. We pretty much have no disruption here. Soul of Resonator grabbing a Synchron Resonator. We have the Bone Arch Fiend activating to come forth and summon from the grave. We're going to be reducing its level to three to now be making our Red Rising Dragon come forth. The Red Rising Dragon is reborning our Crimson Resonator. I'll explain the Eternal Favorite. Missed the timing ruling to you in a second, my friend. We're now going to make a Red Dragon Arch Fiend with the Crimson Gaia. It will be wiping the Terra Incarnate off the fields. We're going to now be making a Dispater. Dispater is going to be reborning a Banished Monster back onto the field. Special summoning our Synchron Resonator into our Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend can negate the Terra Incarnate from being indestroyable by battle. Synchron Resonator returning the Soul Resonator in the Graveyard back to the hand. Scar Red Dragon Archfiend is reborning, I should say summoning, a Red Dragon Archfiend from the extra deck. And doesn't it also pop cards in the field? Then, if this card was sent to the Graveyard for a Synchro material for a Dark Synchro, you could destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. But if we do that, that will trigger the Nightmare Throne, which maybe we don't want to do. We did it. Crimson Gaia is now triggering, so is the Terra Incarnate, and the Nightmare Throne. So, one Ubel is now two Ubels, but the Red Dragon Archfiend will negate it, so it's still going to be one other Ubel. But it's going to be the ultimate Nightmare, which most people don't play. I'm thinking of playing for, you know, fun, but it looks like it's more than fun. It might actually be competitive. Into an Auxilla. At the end of the damage shift, this uh, card is attacked. Inflict damage to your opponent's monster. Also destroy that monster. So it is very similar to the Ubel Fusion. Instead of banishing, it destroys. Can't destroy a battle. You take no damage, just like the other Ubels. But we're not forced to attack into it because we didn't replay our second copy of the Nightmare Pain. So we're just going to end our turn. Now, the Red Dragon Archfiend is going to destroy every monster that did not declare an attack, but the Soul Resonator will protect our monsters from being destroyed. Let's go. 800 life. When you're playing against a deck that very easily reflects battle damage onto you. Okay, summon a level 8 token. Shokan into Crimson Dragon. Crimson Dragon going to go into a level 9 Trushilla is here. Trushilla will trigger the field spot to summon a Ubel into the field if we get rid of the Ultimate Nightmare on field. Goodbye to the Ultimate Nightmare. Goodbye to Terra Incarnate. Goodbye randomly to the Nightmare Pain. Now, what do you do if your Nightmare Pains are banished? Well, you, you're screwed. If you have another Nightmare Pain, let's say it's in the graveyard, the Spirit Gates. So Nightmare Throne could actually add a Nightmare Pain in the graveyard back to the hand by searching for the Dark Beckoning Beast, which will search for the Spirit Gates, which will add the Nightmare Pain in the graveyard back to the hand if you have a level 10 on the fields. But we don't have that play. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend, negate the field spell. Oh boy. Play a another field spell. We were only negated on the effect of summoning a monster off of our monster, leaving the field through a card effect. Daruma flipping the whole field face down for that Samsara D Lotus. Ain't no way. And just like that, Resonator Centurion taking a game two victory. Very well done. So the question of the card that uh, with the miss in the timing. So this states neither player could activate cards or effects when that monster is special summoned. So when that monster special summon has to be the last thing to happen in order for neither player to be able to activate cards in response to the summon. And if this effect did not miss the timing, what you'd be able to do, to do is, let's say your opponent D Lotuses summons a Spirit of You Bell, you'd be able to chain the Eternal Favorite and make a cards not be able to activate in response to your summon. So you'd be able to chain summon to an effect that's resulting in a trigger effect, and then their trigger effect doesn't work. So Konami purposely, I don't even know why this is even on the card to begin with. Honestly, it should not even be there, but it is there and it is a bit confusing. 
you have to on chain link one be able to summon your monster then you can't respond to it but that's not good for your own spirit of you bell right so it almost seems like it's a purposeful downside so that you can't just trigger your spirit of you bell whenever you want but in us doing that to make it so you can't activate spirit of you bell off of this whenever you want you still can if you summon the spirit of you bell on chain link two okay so chain link two to any of your own card effects or your opponent's card effects, summon the spirit of you bell. And because it's summoned on chain link two or higher, it's not the last thing that happened. Thus, this effect doesn't work. So your own spirit of you bell will be able to respond to its own summon where otherwise it would not be able to if you do it on chain link one. Does that make sense? All right. What the heck? Sync just one and that's it? <laughs> okay. Uh, Basala, uh, I guess, timed out, or there was a time limit victory. I don't know what the heck happened. Uh, they had to leave the tournament, I think. But Basala, after losing once to Centurion Resonator, is out. Go on second. Oh, set Imperm pass. That's good. We do have to deal with Imperm and Gamma plus a Max C. Resonator call. Call from our deck. Our Vision Resonator. Soul Resonator activating. We're going to chain Max C, not our Gamma. Maybe we're saving Gamma for an Ash Blossom if it were to be negating our Max C. It didn't, so now we could Gamma something else. Stand up Centurion, equip into the back row our Trudea. Vision Resonator searching for a Crimson Gaia. Crimson Gaia activating a search our deck for a Red Dragon Archfiend card, Fiendish Golem, which will be able to banish a monster. Wow, we're not making any big plays because we're under Max C, because, so that's why. Spirit of you Bell turning off the Gamma. And this is something you have to fear if you're playing against you Bell and they bricked, they might have a Spirit of you Bell in the hand, thus attacking for no reason, which is exactly what we're doing. You just set them up big time. They now have Nightmare Throne, Nightmare Pain that is, they have the Spirit of you Bell. Don't attack for no reason against you Bell on an open field unless you're threatening lethal. Wow, that, that was really unfortunate an actual battle hand trap being relevant. Popping the Spirit of you Bell, grabbing the Grave Scormer, triggering the Spirit of you Bell. You have to remember, wait, well, we don't know that they have a Gamma, so we're just not gonna be able to use that Gamma, especially some of the Scormer, pop you Bell, you Bell, some of the Terror Incarnate. For the Shokan, linking it off into a Lord of Yama. Lord of Yama is going to be searching our deck. Fiendish Golem is not a negate, but it will banish it until the end phase of the next turn. Grabbing a Shavara. Shavara could pop Imperm if it wanted to, but it's going to be much better popping what the Grave Scormer Reborns, which will be our Spirit of Ubel. Spirit of Ubel, searching our deck for a second copy of the Nightmare Pain. Return from the Graveyard back in the deck to summon our Phantom of Ubel for a Monster Negate. Pop the Spirit of Ubel, trigger Spirit of Ubel with the Shavara effect. Summoning from the deck a Ubel, reflecting 1,000 damage, but on that Spirit of Ubel, or the regular Ubel that is, we're going to Daruma Cannon, flip the whole field face down, as the Imperm instead negates Daruma Cannon. <laughs> You're not flipping us face down. I don't think so. You will take the damage. Sure. Main phase two, making a soul of rage, setting up into the back row from the deck, our escape of the unchained. We have a ton of disruption here. Tridea within the end of the main phase, summoning herself onto the field. It's a hard once return of summoning herself from the back row, so getting it out of the way on the opponent's turn is good. Trudea is now activating to equip a card from the deck into our back row as the Phantom of Ubel essentially negates it. Instead, popping a Spirit of Ubel to summon a Ubel from the deck or the graveyard. Come forth. As we then use the Crimson Gaia searching for a Soul Resonator. Now, we could have potentially chose to not summon the Ubel if we wanted to have a, a greater chance of activating the Gamma, but we do have the Soul of Rage also blocking us from using the Gamma, and the Ubel does have synergy with the Nightmare Pain, which not only reflects damage once, but does it twice. So it's a double reflect. So if we are at 2750 attack on the field, 2750, that's lethal damage if we have to attack into the Ubel for game. So this is 3000 damage reflected at the moment and we do have to attack. So this would be game if we were to try to end our main phase. We're gonna Soul of Rage, link off with the Bone Arch Feed, trigger the Little Knight, banishing Trudea off the field. To battle we go, reflect 1,000 damage. 500, 500, and then scoops it up. That's just game one, okay, that's fine. We'll take it into game two. We have another opportunity for Resonator Centurion to make it to the top 16. Now, Ubel having Gamma plus the Nibiru. Oh my gosh, and a max freaking C. Let's go. 
Maxi keeping rogue decks down, huh? We're gonna grab a soul resonator. Soul resonator activate a search our deck. Gamma is going to straight up negate. Now, I believe in game one, we chained Max C to the Soul Resonator last time, so we're changing things up a little bit. Wipe out that Soul Resonator, follow up with a Triple Tactics Talent Mate, take a Gander at that hand, return back the Nightmare Throne, as Yubel has no play now for the next turn. Ash is going to negate the Resonator Call, which we know exactly what's in their hand. We know what to expect here. We already used up our normal summon, so the Primera, unfortunately, will not be turning into a play. All we have is Imperm. Imperm onto a D-Lotus will be good. Ooh, they don't have anything. Imperm against Imperm, sure. Off the top of the deck, we have our Vision Resonator, but we're going off with Primera. Not gonna Imperm Primera as we search for a stand-up Centurion. Stand up, discard Vision Resonator, set up the Trudea, trigger the Vision to grab a Crimson Gaia. Damn, that Imperm, I think we really had to use it. We're going to chain to the Trudea Special Summoning from the back row, chaining our Max C. We're on summon number two, but we know there's a Nibiru in the hand. We saw it. It's not a surprise. So we're going to show Khan into an Auxilla. Auxilla is going to be searching our deck, likely for a Phalanx, and just, uh, no, a Wake Up Centurion instead? What the heck are we doing? Crimson Gaia grabbing a red zone. Where's your Phalanx? Wouldn't Phalanx... I, okay, so this is going to be so that we could synchro during the opponent's turn. This makes sense, sure. Make a level 12. Yep, that's fine. Dark Beckoning Beast, we're gonna chain the Primera. We have to activate Wake Up Centurion while Primera is in the back row. Come forth and summon, this will give us our Blazar. Or it could be argued that it's better to instead summon a Super Nova Dragon to banish the entire field in response to a monster effect. Wake Up Centurion, chain link block in the Primera from an Ash Blossom, not that there is one, as we then make our Crimson Dragon. Crimson Dragon into the Imperm, but we could Imperm the Imperm. This is the, you know, you have to really think if you should set your Imperm into someone else's Imperm column because they could Imperm your Imperm now, and that's what's gonna happen. Imperm the Imperm. Jeez. Oh my Jesus. And we're the ones that put our Imperm there. All right. The Crimson Dragon's gonna go through. Shokan into, as I said, the red supernova dragon. We're waiting for a monster effect activation to then banish their entire field. Now there has to be a field worthy of banishing to even want to use it. I'm gonna grab a dark beckoning with the spirit gate, spirit gates, discard D Lotus, reborn D Lotus, D Lotus sent to the graveyard to summon from the deck, a spirit of Yubel. Do we banish the field here? Nope, we're waiting. Okay, we're not doing it yet. Nightmare pain, pop the spirit of Yubel, grab a grave squirmer, trigger spirit of Yubel. Now we're doing it to get rid of the Nightmare Pain. So the Yubel will be summoned afterward. Goodbye to the Supernova, come forth from the deck. Regular Yubel, Grave Scormer special summon. Should we have waited for the Grave Scormer activation in the hand to at least banish the Yubel in the field, possibly? Or were we afraid that they would not activate the Grave Scormer? Now I'm making a cross sheep. I, oh, the fear also is that they're going to be summoning a Phantom of Yubel to stop our Supernova Dragon, so we had limited time to do so. Summon the Phantom of Yubel, trigger the Cross Sheep, reborn the D-Lotus from the graveyard, further Shokan into our Chaos Freaking Angel. Some mad lads are playing the Chaos Angel on Summon Banish any card on the field. We're gonna use Red Zone to reborn the Supernova Dragon. Now, guess what? It's activatable again. And if we look at the Chaos Angel, it's grayed out. It does, was not used with a light monster, so it's not unaffected from being banished by the Supernova Dragon. It's back and it will be used. Well, now it's gonna be negated by the Phantom of Yubel, unfortunately, as we now make it Muckraker. Muckraker, discard a card, reborn the Chaos Angel, which will trigger again. So not only is the Supernova Dragon activating again, we are also going to add a Nibiru on top of this. What the heck is going on? You summoned five times on my turn. Tributing off the entire field as the Chaos Angel still about to be reborn from the grave. Come forth, reborn. On summon, banishing that 6,000 defense token, 8,000 attack. Spirit of Yubel triggering to summon a Yubel into the field, but we don't have a Phantom Pain to reflect that 6,000 damage token back onto them. 
reborning from the graveyard for, with the effect of the Grave Squirmer as we then make a Lord of Yama. Lord of Yama activate, grab from our deck a Shavara Squirmer. It has already used up its effect and we are scooping it up. We're this close to getting to the top 16 with our Centurion Resonator.